It's the 29th of January 2022 and this is the future of photography. Our the future of photography. Music. Yep, the intro is back. The technology is fixed. And uh, here we are, Adrian, Jeremiah, and I'm Chris. How's everyone doing? Oh, good. good. It, just, it, it warms my heart to hear the, the, the TFOP music back. It's glad, good, good to be back. And, <laughs> and uh, sorry to everybody who watches us on YouTube who've missed out the last couple of weeks. It's not, nice to be able to back fire on all beautiful cylinders. Beautiful graphics and everything. Um, okay, it's another episode about, well, about what? Adrian, you put this one together. Let <laughs> us know what you what you brought up here. Well, today is about the absolute immediate future of photography. Yeah, it's starting next week. Um, so uh, I thought, yeah, a li- little bit in the future, but but not very far. Um, I, I'm referring to the Winter Olympics, uh, which, as we record this, uh, starts, I think, um, in about six days time, I think, is the official opening uh, of the Winter Olympics. And... Uh, you know, it's the, the Olympics, as we know, is often a time where companies launch flagship cameras and things like that. And, and you know, the, we always see these pictures online of huge, great stores of you know hundreds of cameras and hundreds of lenses that all the professional photographers can get. So I thought to myself, well, you know, what is the, the future of photography uh, for sports? Yeah, the Winter Olympics uh, being one great example. Uh, so, yeah, today we've got a few examples of, of photography, uh, sports photography. And, uh, you yeah, know, we're going to think a little bit about what kind of photography we would like to take or make uh, uh, if we were uh, able to be at the Winter Olympics. And, yeah, what do we think perhaps is some of the, the, the future things that are going to come to, to uh, I, don't know, well, I don't know whether sports photography needs uh, a revolution or an evolution or either of those things. But, Let me yeah, ask a question in the into the round first. Um, anyone here uh, ever done any serious kind of sports photography? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think I think the th- most serious I ever got. Um, uh, a friend of mine was driving in a motor race, uh, the twenty four hour race at Silverstone, uh, and I went in as team photographer uh, for them. Um, twenty four hours is a long time to be taking photos for, <laughs> but I did. It was a fantastic experience, um, and uh, yeah, really, yeah, really great because you you get to be in the garages with the team, and you know, and just be mucking in and being part of everything. So you had close uh, access. That is. That is a kind kind of a, a that's good to get close is always good yeah 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 it's a fantastic opportunity um, and uh, yeah great great fun so that's about that's the, the the most sporty that I've done my photography was that was there any let's say a competition type situation between you and other photographers because that's that's my picture of these sports events you have a whole bunch of people uh, with big cameras big lenses in the pit elbow to elbow and they're trying to wrestle their way to the front to get the shot is is that um, was there any of that when you did that uh, so no, uh, possibly for two reasons. Um, one is that uh, I was I, I went in with the team that my friend was driving in. Right. So um, you know uh, that was kind of exclusive. Um, and the second thing is that uh, the, the the Silverstone twenty four hours is not the biggest, most televised, most attended race. Uh, you know, a, a, you know, it's not like Le Mans. I suppose it's closer in a way to something like the Nurburg 24, but it's not, yeah, it, it's not something that is massive. So it was, it had more of a, it's a bit more than a clubby feel and there's certainly some big money going around there, but um, yeah, it was, it was nice. It was good. It was good fun. Good. Jeremiah, how about you? Yes. Uh, coincidentally, uh, I, I, I don't know if I describe it as sports photography, though I was an accredited photographer at the 80-something Olympics in Montreal. Okay. Uh, and I was accredited by an arts magazine who sent me there to, <laughs> <laughs> to, approach, to approach it. I think it was the magazine was Arts Canada or Canada Arts. It's, it's, it's a blur now. but Is that, Was know, that during I, your I, fashion photography time? No, no. It was, it was before that, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I think it was it was before that. Um, Maybe that launched your fashion career. <laughs> yeah, they really threw me out of sports. Olympic to, fashion photography. Stay out. <laughs> no, I, I I think it was early days when I was just uh, really doing 
you know, I guess what you would call pure artistic photography expressive. Right. And, um, and I, I don't know how this all came about, but, but they sent me to the Olympics and, um, I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take pictures, not, uh, in the kind of community of, uh, 800 mil lenses all on monopods, uh, motor, motor driven. And we were shooting on film then. It wasn't digital. Now, if it, you know, people are just kind of spray and pray kind of photography now with sports. That's why so much of it looks the same. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, you know, my, my attitude, I shot all in black and white and I was just capturing what I would consider expressive images right on the ground in the Olympics. And right. um, so the, it was uh, sort of counterintuitive, but but uh, I really got the feel of it. Uh, so I, I, I must I must admit, I don't really watch a lot of sports and I kind of avoid the Olympics. <laughs> so so for, for me, is the, the sports photography thing, um, I think the, the approach that you did there with black and white and doing something that is uh, very different from from the run of the mill sports photography type um that that suits me quite well yeah uh, it was fun and it was and you know it was what 10 days and um you just i had a lot of free hand in other words i i, I could really do what i wanted and um no it was it, it it was good it was just like being in an environment like you said adrian where you have a certain kind of exclusivity that people don't really um most people don't have we were talking about natchway and war photographers like having access to a community to an experience uh, is really for a photographer getting close and getting right in there with the community gives you the opportunity to not only make aesthetically pleasing images if that's your desire but really engage in the subject and i think that's really um another aspect of photography yeah, right. I should probably probably sh tell another photography, sports photography tale here. Um, the, the time when I went, my, my children were in kindergarten and I went to photograph their sports day uh, and forgot to load the camera with film. Um, <laughs> did, didn't realise until afterwards. Um, <laughs> so I, I expect I'm still on the learning curve for sports photography. <laughs> so the, the closest... Landscape. The, yeah, landscape, yeah. The closest that I've done uh, in terms of sports photography is probably bird photography on a on a workshop in Japan years ago, um, because just from a, from a from a technical point of view, the photographers there had these big ten thousand dollar lenses with them and and tripods and gimbals and uh, trying to capture a bird in flight. I mean, you really need to have the the right equipment and the right settings in your camera the right autofocus settings and uh, a camera that shoots a lot of frames so you get the exact kind of shot that you want um it's a very technical type of photography and uh yeah i was i was co-hosting a workshop there and it was it was a great experience it was fun it was i was doing the exact opposite of them i was i was uh very often i got out my my four by five large format camera, black and white film, and <laughs> and took my time to to five minutes to frame one shot and then get the exposure yeah. exactly right. And it was, um, yeah, it was it was a very very interesting time yeah. for sure. Yeah, not not the ideal gear for a bird in flight. I, I did not capture many birds in flight that way, but I did capture pictures of photographers with uh, in flight. I, I mean, I mean, in, in, in one of these situations, uh, I think 150 photographers were waiting for the sun to come up in the morning behind some cranes in a in a river, and uh, it, I, there must have been a couple million bucks worth of equipment on that bridge. It was see see that that sort of situation it. it it really um it really triggers the contrarian in me right me it's it, at that point i just think i i don't want this photograph anymore um uh, and, and i will absolutely be the one that turns around and looks at the people and tries to find something else and, and but I, I did i did some of that bird photography as well of course because oh yeah it's, it's also an excellent learning opportunity to to learn more about your gear and the settings and um all this kind of stuff so it, it was a good experience all around every every aspect of it had something to uh, something interesting to it yeah interesting yeah. so um today for our conversation i'm 
I'm thinking, you know, we, we all uh, can picture, you know, the, the archetypal sports photographer, you know, with a, you know, two ca- a camera over each shoulder with oh, different yes. lenses, a yellow vest, somewhere on the sidelines of a sports field or, you know, o- overseeing the ski jump or, or whatever it might be. Yeah. So I think, you know, that, that, let, let's bank that. And so we all understand what that looks like. Cause, and then, then let's think about some other kinds of, sports photography as well which is which is interesting um i think uh as chris i think you've got some of the these links um there's, there's one that I'd, I'd like to start with actually uh which is by a photographer quite a well-known photographer called called uh david burnett um many of our listeners and viewers would, would have heard of him um i think the work that he does around sport is, is fascinating so this is the guy who like chris will take his four by five camera uh and find uh things to find things of interest in live sporting events um and you know just just does some phenomenal work um so this one that we're showing here now is of a, a baseball game um you know captured absolutely in the moment at the batter at the end of his swing um and you know, with a very selective focus, yes. uh, presumably taking full advantage of the movements available in a large format camera. 100%, yes. <laughs> um, uh, f- fantastic photography, um, uh, you know, and, and just gives you something different uh, and something something unique to, to me unique I, I haven't seen anything quite like it the one that always sticks in my mind and i'm not sure if you've got it available here but the one that always sticks in my mind is of the of the long jump event um which may or may not have been at some olympics um but again taken with um uh take it taken with a medium format camera and I th- if i remember correctly the image is taken just at the time where the, the jumper is landing in in the sand pit i'm uh, searching for it as we speak uh, you you guys because you know his work you can probably picture the very same photograph um but uh, it, it's very always one explosive, yeah yeah, yeah that's right. It right it's, it's always it's always one that i found to just, just to be an, an amazing shot um so yeah the, I, i'm not you know I, I don't think I'm the person that's going to take a large format camera to to sporting events, um, you know. Uh, but but the the fact that it's more considered and it's different from that well, really it takes in the dedication. Thing. You know, the, the first time yeah. I've I've become aware of his of his large format uh, stuff around sports was um, a few years ago. He he made like the rounds through the blogs and the twitters and so on with his photos of a Formula One event. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. which is even faster paced in some respects. And he was the guy with the black and white. I, th- I think it's a graphic speed graphic or something that he used, used like one of these 1950s press photographers. So um, very, it's very re- fast paced, actually very yeah. sports like in, in, in terms of the way you use these cameras. It's it's really hard to do, even when you're in something that is hugely lively and and colourful, and you know it's it to, to it's it's a real challenge. Um, you know, one of the things that's not too far away from from where I live is again another famous racetrack, Brands Hatch, and when they have uh, some of the big events there, it's a fantastic day out. You know, really good for all the family, and there's thousands and thousands of people there, lots and lots of racing, some really colourful cars and things, even in that sort of you'd think almost ideal situation it's actually genuinely a hard thing to do to get an interesting photograph (laughs) well have you seen like some of these uh video camera um i was watching uh f1 tv as it were and they they were running down the you know almost hundreds of photographers official photographers on each corner and all of these kind of critical angle um, whether they be still or, or videographers and, and um, watching how they anticipate and pan the, the cameras absolutely, you know, with incredible precision to capture a moment, a curve, you know, often, you know, even on a tight turn at 120, never mind a straightaway, but but uh, those are very, very impressive technical achievements that make it look very easy. Yeah, getting that you're... right is kind of a sport in itself. Correct. That's where I was <laughs> going with that. Yes. It certainly is. And, and, and it's, it's funny because if I think about the future of sports photography and 
what would I like to see? Um, I would like to see more points of view. I would like a dead on camera attached to a ski jumper that was not bouncing around that, that would sail me through the air. I, you know, that I would like to see uh, a long jumper with a camera, you know, a small camera that gave me the feeling of that. I, I think putting the audience in the action. Formula One tends to do that maybe better than most sports because they are a combination of sports and technology. So they are obviously embracing of that kind of thing. And I think we'll see more and more uh, sophistication in Formula One and, and most racing, car racing. But even, even, you know, summer or winter, the idea that you could really uh, a switch between competitors uh, for that kind of point of view, and and to be able to just feel the 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 height or the the distance or the the power of of uh, a long jump or a high jump uh, or a, a you know a, a slalom. Um, you know, you're going 100 miles an hour, you know, down a ski. I, mean, I mean, I think this is incredible. Isn't it interesting? Because in, in, uh, if you go on YouTube, you see a lot of action cam based sports videography, yes. especially uh, whatever snowboarding, skiing and these kind of things. You just you just clamp yeah. a, a GoPro to your to your poles, to your ski, to something and, and you get this unique point of view. And I wonder why that's not really happening yet in something like the Olympics. That's the one thing. The other thing I want to see, and I said this earlier um, or a year ago or a couple of years ago, is um, you, you know these these auto autonomous drones, the Skydio, for example, that you, yeah. just, mm -hmm. you just take, go do your thing. This is your target and follow it. I'm still waiting for for a little swarm of drones around one of these athletes that captures them from automatically from three different sides at the same time and I then so get a live that. feed yes. from that and they are and they are small enough so they i mean you could program them in a way that they wouldn't interfere and the athlete would have get to used uh, would have would have uh, had have to get used to the swirling things around them of course but they already are so in the in the limelight yeah, well, anyway. Well, in football, American football, Chris, you know, there's the cable cams running oh, yeah. all over the field. Yeah, and we get a lot of that very, over here now as well. The players are now, you know, uh, they ignore it. Um, it I it, is, it is interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see more of that sort of cameras, yeah, body-mounted cameras or, or equipment-mounted cameras, you know, in, yeah. in some of these sports. The drone thing, Chris, is interesting. Um, in, in recent times, They uh, they've used in the World Rally Championship. They use drones a lot more now than they used to. So they they used to have helicopters, um, uh, and uh, which is great. Except that helicopters, you can't have that many of them, and they're very expensive, and they can't get that close to the edge of mountains and stuff like that. Um, now they use drones a lot more, and you get fantastic coverage. You know, let's say you've got a yeah. rally car on a, you know on an unmade road coming to a hairpin bend, you know, or something like that. The drone can actually follow the car around, and, and you know, and it, it's really quite impressive stuff. But I think it's yeah, only a matter I, of time I, for that to be become reality. Yeah, I mean, the Sky Skydio is a great example because you just go, that's your target, go for it, yeah. and and you can, you know, I I, I think that that probably true in most sports that the idea of getting you know uh, drone pictures that are uh, unusual angles um, even behind a skier like so so you're just tracking a skier yeah uh, would be a, a unbelievable and if you for example as a still photographer just basically slowed the shutter somewhat so that you you got a sense of the speed just and, imagine uh, imagine you you you'd have a downhill skier uh, you'd follow a downhill skier like in a first uh, first person shooter a uh, game just behind yes. them as if you as, it, as if it was about. a video game that would be so amazing yeah. to have that kind of consistent follow distance and that kind of stuff it would, it would be it would be fantastic yeah um another one i want to see that for um and they do i think they do have some cameras in, in the bobsleighs now mm -hmm. so yeah because yeah, that's that's an incredible thing um yeah incredible sport so But yeah so you, all of these things these... exist all of these things are great and um, one of the things i think i'd like to see is you know we see 
whether we recognize it as sport photography or not, we actually see quite a lot of uh, advertising and fashion photography related to sports equipment, sports clothing, etc. Uh, and uh, some of that is is really uh really good fun and, and interesting as well i've got one link which is actually quite an old link um to uh a, an advert I th- I th- that uh, was shot by chase jarvis who's a, another well-known photographer on the internet um and uh there this is some years old i first saw this some years ago i think possibly on a youtube video rather than the actual photos themselves and i believe it ended up being a a series of photos for um advertising in uh, printed magazines at the time but here we've got uh a fixed uh well it's it's a skier going over a jump but in a mountain so it's not a competition skier but it's a it's a a sequence of shots where you've got them all overlaid so you can see the 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 skier at different points you know still at different points in the jump and it's what uh, it's one person but there's maybe 20 20 captures of that one person in the one image as they go through the arc of their jump and i i kind of like this sort of thing it's sort of like well-crafted uh action photography you know what's interesting Um, this this kind of a sequence photo of a motion sequence where you have these individual still frames and then put them together in a picture this this photo it says under it is from 2009 so that's like 13 years old i bet that there are some cameras out there today that can do this handheld in camera that would be I interesting. Have, I have it. That's my Insta360. There you go. Does it do uh, that? There, oh, there's okay. a, there is a setting that will do exactly that. Yeah. It is will basically, really? yeah, it, it basically shoots, I guess, like a video, chops it up, yep. stitches it. Yep. Is that is that one, the one you've you go. just got? Or is that the, yes, yeah. It is. yeah, it's the one that I just got. Yeah. Ah, right. So there, right. there you go. This is, this is, and, and, and. 13 years ago, this was a lot of manual work in Photoshop with yes. layers and masking and whatever. A lot, a lot. And uh, now it's 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 built into a camera. I mean, isn't See, that that's amazing? the sort of thing <laughs> we live in. The that's future. the sort of thing I'd like to take to the Olympic Games, right? So we're talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do we? What what would I like to shoot at the Olympic Games? I'd like to get some of that kind of stuff. So, so that sort of, it's it's a different view. It's less. You know, it's. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, we talked about you know, having cameras on all the competitors and stuff like that. That'd be great too. But it's just just creating something that is perhaps about sport, but maybe verges into the artistic and creative side as well. And yeah, that's the, you know, um, I'd probably add to that. I'd like to see some of the yeah behind the scenes stuff and the less glamorous stuff as well. You know, or uh, you know, or show or include in an image. You know, the, some some of the stuff that is. I think we are we are moving in, in some areas we're moving a bit away from the super polished stuff because the our our habits our watching habits change with with YouTube and other platforms that have a lot of this type of content where you get to see how the how the sausage is made so I guess mm. um I yeah. guess we will see uh, more of that in the mainstream media as well. Yeah. I Would mean, maybe, maybe the know, 360 but... thing is a way to go, Jeremiah. So, okay, so I can picture you going out, Jeremiah, and you taking a photograph with your 360 camera. And on one side of it is like the sporting thing that you'd like to capture in whatever way. But if you're looking at it in VR and you can turn around, you know, uh, and, and then you see the ice cream van, right? <laughs> or yeah. you know, people, people, people queuing for a hot dog or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, what's interesting, it strikes me about that image by Chase Jarvis and, of course, the built-in image images that are uh, available in the Insta is this is very much um, from my bridge. Um, oh, yes. Which we exactly. talked about off camera. I mean, he did this. He did uh, this it with was yeah. going to be one of my picks, but, but that kind of uh, animals, humans in motion uh, capturing, and he did it with a lot more technique, <laughs> with lots of cameras and mathematically done, uh, but was the precursor to a lot of the sports photography or men in motion, women in motion, you know, athletes in motion generally. Um, I think that, you know, and maybe we track even further back to Leonardo and his studies of, of the human body and how how the math works. So there is a direct line um, of, of, of that kind of thing. And of course, the Olympics, we know, go all the way back to Greece. 
So um, I don't think they had a lot of photography back then. But, <laughs> yeah, but have there people was... chiseling things into rocks at the, <laughs> yeah. at the, in real time, yeah. probably. Yeah, live. Live, <laughs> live. live chiseling. Um, but the, the kind of how we are captivated by, by athleticism as ritual is something that is uh, interesting. And that's why looking at sports photography as uh, social context rather than just competition is something that, that is very, very interesting. And we don't see enough of it, I, I think, of the, the ritualization of sports. I, 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 I like that commentary there, actually, Jeremiah. That resonates with me quite a lot, uh, you know, the, the, the social aspect of this. So, so much of the, the commercial sport photography that we see is about capturing the moment and getting the image down the cable in you know, 30 seconds or less so it can be you know, almost real-time published on the internet. Um, I, I like what you say there about the social side of it is because you know, none of these things exist in isolation, do they? So none of these, um, uh, none, none of these sports could, could happen uh, without there being an audience for them. Um, year, years ago, I remember when I worked for, I, thought, I can't remember which company it was. I think it was when I worked for IBM and we, uh, and IBM had a customer. Um, it was one of the major florida based teams i think i think i can't remember i think it was one of the the one of the football teams based in florida anyway the the point being is that the they described themselves as a sports entertainment company yeah. and and you know the the, the they recognized that actually you know the, their their business yes of course they had to win at the sports but their business was they had to provide the best possible experience for the fans and but, you know and so none of the, none of this none of this stuff would exist without the fans i've got a silly fun link actually just for us all um uh, just for to as to digress for a moment um, i suspect all three of us remember and were big fans of a tv series called buck rogers in the 25th century i know i used to watch <laughs> a it. classic it is a, a classic Absolutely. a classic 80s tv uh, uh series um there was one episode of that um which where which uh, where they had a, a 25th century Olympiad. And uh, what, as it turned out, what happened was that there was no, there were no spectators at this sporting event. It was all, you know, filmed and used or, or, or equivalent of in this sci-fi adventure and, and shared um, elsewhere. And you could tell whether the Olympians were winning or not by the amount of applause and feedback that came back over the network to the, to the studio where all the sports <laughs> were being conducted. And, um, it, it's kind of depressingly familiar, actually, in 2022, <laughs> um, you know, large, you know, large, large studios, uh, sorry, large stadiums uh, of sports um, not being uh, populated by uh, any spectators. Uh, some of the stadiums in this country, some of the, the soccer stadiums in this country have, have trialed, you know, having cardboard cutouts of spectators, piping, piping sounds in to pretend to be spectators, um, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's pretty um, prescient, actually. Buck Rogers didn't need to wait for the 25th century for that one to happen. Um, no. But it's, I, I think, for me, the the comment here, really, my my comment on this, apart from that just being a little bit of fun, uh, is that the sports doesn't exist without the spectators. And so, if I was at the Winter Olympics next week, I'd be wanting to make sure that I, I was capturing it in the round. I think. Do you know? Uh, uh... You know, we, we often were looking at, from our point of view here, um, capturing sports, it, you know, because we're like, how do you capture sports? You, you, you accept the sports, you understand the rules, and you try to create as much competition in the image or, or energy dynamics or the triumph of, uh, of, of <laughs> the human condition and peak uh, athleticism uh, in an instant, sure. But can you now put a pin in that and think Rollerball? Remember Rollerball? Ah, great movie. Right. Mm -hmm. So I haven't watched it. Uh, uh, Norman Jewison's Rollerball. Okay? I, I kind of so know what talking, it's about. It's yeah. just the one where James yeah. James Kahn was the star. Yeah, yeah? exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, great movie. T totally great movie. And and is there a world uh, that we could imagine where a sporting event is designed specifically? to be recorded. In uh -huh. other words, 
In other Interesting. words, backwards construct so that you create the sport, the competition, or whatever it is, for the purposes of excitement in capture, whether it's video or still. Aren't there I can think sports of some like that already? Foot, American football is close to that, but not purely that. And, and it started out before no. it was televised. I mean, there are some that lend right. themselves, aren't there, like, uh, to, to it very nicely, like something like I don't know, pool or, or snooker. The, the, the closest... Uh, yeah, that that's it's re, re, made for, made for the watching of, made for. for yeah, the I mean, uh, uh, mm. I could imagine I mean, that that could happen. There are there are sports that just don't really work with spectators. Um, one example, which is not is not anywhere near Olympic, but um, the whole drone racing genre right now is <laughs> is. Mm -hmm. they, what they actually do is they hold these races in stadiums, so they have empty stadiums with uh, with all those gates True. and stuff they have to fly through and tubes and whatever and and uh, the whole thing is filmed from not just the outside but from the first person view from of the drones, the drones. and uh, yeah. and uh, I, I remember maybe two years ago that they tried to make this into a big tv kind of event i think espn got on board and stuff like that and i'm not sure where that has gone because i don't really follow sports that much but it was it was one of those areas where i where it was clearly clearly the case that they were trying to to spruce this up for the viewers because they're it's impossible to do this in front of a live audience it just doesn't yeah. work well another no, one for, for these, that is uh you know possibly you guys are less well aware of is, is cricket right so oh, typically yeah, yeah. typically uh cricket uh was a five-day game or or well uh, either a one-day game or a five-day game. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, I, I can't think why, but some people decided that five days was quite a long time to watch a single game, right? Uh, I have no idea uh, why. Although, to me, it's an Not absolute me. luxury, but there you go. Um, so uh, there are now variants, there are now modern variants of cricket uh, that are deliberately designed to be more consumable, yeah, uh, either if you're there live, uh, you know, in a single evening. I mean, they now play cricket in the evenings. If you work in London, you can actually go to the cricket in the evening after work, right? And, and you can have a few drinks and watch the match, and then go home later on. And because they have these shorter versions of of the game now, um, so so. I, but but yeah, one that's designed specifically, I guess, drone racing is a good example. I can't think of many. Yeah, other I mean, I think that that designed. that one could say that uh, going to a live Formula one race is not as exciting as seeing it on True. camera outside of the sound and, and some of the yeah. whiz buys. But if you're in the grandstand, I mean, what are you seeing? Wing, 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 wing. That's yeah. it. Been there, um, been there, done that. Um, and it's the same with other forms. Other forms of racing are um, a little bit more accessible. So I love the Le Mans 24 hour because it's just a massive, great party. I mean, it's basically like going to an enormous music festival, except that they have a motor race on as well as all the music and the partying and stuff like that. So that's always a good one. Yeah. But the experience but, of the sport is, is, you know, really different. I'm, I'm talking about just inventing a sport that is specifically uh, have to DNA give that one some thought. It's a good idea. Yes, yeah. it's a good idea. We'll have to give that one some thought. <laughs> That's what I thought. Rollerball. Rollerball. Mm. Yeah, rollerballs. I mean, I, 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 I do. I, I did a couple. I had a couple of years with uh, the the Oculus Quest uh, VR headset, and uh, haven't really used it in a while, especially since Facebook took over. Um, not really that interested anymore, but it was um, at, the, at least in the beginning. There were certain sports in that environment where you could have a spectators be be part of that, play the sport. Um, some of that stuff actually relatively physical, and uh, so so it was the competition and the spectating kind of a you could fluidly move in and out of these roles and become part of it and. And feel like you were there in some respects. So cool. it was it was a very different kind of uh, approach. But I think we'll see more of that in in the next years. I think so. I just like to say I don't want to what I don't want a first person view from a trampolinist. Please, <laughs> I think that might make me seasick. <laughs> Okay, we've got one last great example of how the future is becoming real to us right now. 
um and this is something that caught uh, caught my eye uh, a week or so ago i think um, and we have a link for this one as well chris so um we've talked uh, on this podcast before about the the current uh, latest generation of uh flagship cameras from from all mm. the manufacturers and just how clever they are and you know do they have mechanical shutters or not and how fast can they go with an electronic shutter um the photograph here now um it was was taken with one of those cameras and it is a photograph of a swedish uh actually the, the photographer is swedish actually i don't know the nationality of the athlete but this is a, a, a biathlon athlete uh at the point in the biathlon uh with she's shooting rather than cross-country skiing and the photograph is taken and you can see the bullet just as it's left the muzzle of the rifle which um, I, used to require uh, like a dark room, a flash, a trigger of sorts, and yeah, and now this is being done in the environment, like outdoors in a in a live sporting event, uh, not the Winter Olympics, um, actually, because that doesn't start for a week, but it's a a, a, a recent uh, stage of the biathlon World Cup season, uh, and yeah, it's I just think just. <laughs> think this is amazing because yeah i mean you, you you would have to have a huge great rig of uh, and, and incredibly carefully timed stuff and now you can actually go to the shops and you can buy a camera albeit it costs a few thousand dollars but you can go to the shops and you can buy a camera and you can actually take a photograph of a speeding bullet well the question is can you do this because the photographer i mean okay he has a he has a technical marvel in his hand this camera does like at a reduced uh, at re at re reduced picture size, I think it's 11 megapixels. The camera can do 120 frames a second. So you, of course, increase your chances of doing this. And the shortest shutter speed of that camera is now, is it a 32,000th of a second? I think or it is a 32,000. It's like really, yeah. really short. So, so uh, I read the, that the photographer had to practice and practice and practice to get it right, to get the right point in time. Because if you don't, then you end up spending hours searching for this one picture among the thousands <laughs> of photos. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> so, so it's in cinema, we used to call this when we shoot, when we shoot with the Phantom. You know the yeah the yeah, yeah, yeah high speed yeah uh, yeah. Which I mean, I, I've I've used it for shots, and and um, you know, you when you're cranking up to say ten thousand frames, uh. you know. Uh, and when we used to shoot on film, the Phantom, they had these massive oh, yes. baskets of film. And then you'd hit, you know, and you'd hear the zzzz of the shot. Like, but the dailies, when you were looking for it, it was like, might as well order dinner. Needle in the haystack. It would take forever to get there. And, but the results are pretty impressive. Sure, yeah. Surely there must be some AI software now, right? Or yeah, the machine Probably. learning software that Probably. will learn to spot the bullets in the, in the not too yeah. distant future. I just, yeah. think, I just think it's phenomenal. So there's yeah, yeah, it's a, a few things today that sort of... You know, or, or it's mind blowing to today's topic totally and this is this is one of them and it's just it's just phenomenal um the fact that you can actually just go and get a camera that does that now um i think is great so i think well, yeah, on, that, on a yeah on a spectrum adrian, from adrian that 360 camera will do bullet time those <laughs> kinds of things 360 180 i mean like and that's a consumer camera at at uh, I think it's 4K or even 6K. I don't. I, I think it's 6K. Uh, so uh, it's amazing you know, stuff that say? we have available to us. Amazing, yeah. amazing stuff. So I I don't think I'm quite at the David Burnett end of the spectrum. Um, maybe maybe that's more Chris's kind of a thing. Um, I I'm I'm probably I'm definitely to the sort of social side of the the sporting photography want to capture the whole thing but i am also intrigued uh as is jeremiah clearly uh in all the new tools and uh, and toys that we can get so yeah jeremiah you'll have to to show us some stuff that you've shot with your 360 in the near future yeah just getting um used to the camera to be honest uh you know i haven't i haven't shot anything that is anything other than what i would consider kind of test results and because one of the problems with it is the, the the menu is you either have to attach a Bluetooth it to your um, phone, 
or or the menu is like the size of like a quarter of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like, what? You know, it, it's not intuitive in that way. Uh, maybe maybe but, maybe pluck some settings somewhere. Go out on a vampire hunt at night. I'm sure you find a lot of vampires in your neck of the woods these days. <laughs> yes, I have. But <laughs> but I'll tell you one of the greatest things about it. Totally non sequitur here. I got a strap and I to wear it around my neck. And I went for a walk when I was in New York, um, (laughs) walking around the park by (laughs) myself. Um, And it attaches intuitively uh, to your earbuds. And you can go take a photo, click, (laughs) take a photo, click. You you, you literally, you do not have to touch the camera. And so if you set it at, say, you know, 120, you know, a nice wide, POV, and you just walk around like, you know, Dizga Vertov, you know, wearing a camera, right? Um, I am a camera, that early c- cinematic experience. Um, you just can take pictures by talking to yourself. Nobody looks twice anymore. That's true. And uh, so that, <laughs> so street photography is a whole other world of which. Yeah, but on on, on with, with street photography, you kind of want to be stealthy, so you you have to change that keyword to I don't know, Kurchu <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> but then people go COVID, COVID. Oh no, right? <laughs> not good, not good. Pretend you're on the pretend you're on the phone. Something you would normally say on the phone. Yeah, that that. Yeah. Good one. yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's right. very interesting. Um, Anything, anything future to take out of that? Well, I think we included a lot of thoughts. I want those drones. I want those swarms of drones. I want to see them. Mm. Ah. Anyway, let's move on to the pick of the week. Uh, let's start with Jeremiah. What did you? Yeah, just a us? traditional walk in the history of photography uh, with sports. Sports photography, eighteen thirty-five yeah. to two thousand seventeen. Oh, this is a nice website. It's a good yes. It's a, it's, a, it's a very a very animated kind of website. Image of a tennis yeah. player, 1800 and Look at something. That. Two minutes. <laughs> Two Action. minutes. <laughs> Action shot. It's like watching a movie. Ah, I see. Okay, so this is... Here we go. Hey, that's cool. I, yeah, I love this. This is one of my favorite images on the site. This is really well done. Uh, Although, oh, so, so, so that's well that's just you know, somebody running uh, and actually uh, multiple exposures of somebody running in front of the camera, so you can yeah. see the movement and the, a bit like the horse. I guess. So, sports photography through the history. That is that is cool. I'll spend nice. some time on that. That's that looks like a nice half hour to spend. Some, some <laughs> it does, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and and a lot of images that that you'd never have seen before. Like they're not sort of iconic in many ways so it was mm. good right adrian what did you bring us uh well mine isn't so much a link to share um but i just want to give a shout out to our discord community uh this week who um have been uh in a very friendly and supportive way um have been correcting some of my misplaced facts from last week's show um, I incorrectly identified two Hollywood actors as Australian when actually neither of them is Australian. So um, I, I think, um, it, it, and, and just by way of an example of how friendly the Discord community was, they did say, to, I said, I'm sorry, I should do more research. And, and one of them did pop up and say, well, do you know what? That, that was just you know, on the fly in the conversation. So we, possibly we couldn't really have expected you to do the full research on that. <laughs> so I just want to say sh- a shout out to everybody on the Discord um, um, and uh, yeah, and thank you. And yeah, I really do enjoy the the conversations that we have on it. A load of wide ranging conversations uh, that we have on there, not just about the podcast topics. Uh, so anybody that fancies joining the chat, uh, please yes, yeah, uh, join the TFOP server, uh, and it'd be welcome to see you. Check the show notes. There is always a link there on how to find us and how to interact. Cool. Um, I brought. I'll have to go back way far away from sport um, back to space and uh, back to the James Webb telescope there's a German magazine that uh, has an exclusive first shot from the cameras of the James Webb telescope and uh, I don't think we'll want to we want to just point people to the link of (laughs) this Uh, that's the shot yes (laughs) 
I'm not going to say what's on there. Either you're watching the video or you're following the link in the show notes. Um, oh, just a little funny. funny thing at the again. Just, just imagine that really being real. That would be a bit of a disappointment after 20 years of doing that. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I guess that's it for today. Um, I'm, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this yeah, episode. Yeah, good fun conversation. Lots, of, lots of good fun in here. And... Uh, quite some food for thought i want these drones i want them so bad you have them soon just imagine <laughs> don't just you imagine. own at least two drones anyway chris sorry what again don't you own at least two drones no anyway? just one just oh, one just one now oh, okay I'm just one i always sell the old one and get a new one and then ah, and I then see. i don't fly it enough that yes. not, not as not as much as i should so there you go that's that's the big problem with drones but Anyway, we'll be back soon with more. Um, you can find us online and bye bye, everyone. Take care. Yeah, take care. Bye bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Mm-hmm.